You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, He takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions, searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. Upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have a beautiful line in the response again today. The psalm is often a great key for reading the daily readings. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. And a covenant is a bonding of two people or two institutions that join together to pursue a common shared goal. And it's really, it's more than a contract, it's a life commitment with their lives involved. And God is involved with humanity. God created us. God created everything for blessing. There is language in the scriptures of curses attributed to God. And I would just say from the very start that all the curses wished for by God are all for our salvation. They're more in the category of punishments for a bad behavior that parents give to children. No dessert for the next week until this behavior changes. So the children's behavior have brought upon themselves the deprivation of dessert. And you could list any uh, line of different things. But all the things that God has given us are for blessing. And anything, any sometimes misfortune that comes upon us, sometimes people malinterpret that as a curse from God. It's not. But it is a chance to get close to God. It is a chance to open our hearts to God's action. And we have a lot of words of the word, the word curses frequently used in the first reading today. And it's used uh, very powerfully by Paul, very intentionally, uh, to help this community to realize the opportunity they have with faith in Christ and that they're justified by faith and that they're not justified by the deeds of the law. This is one of the big themes of the letter to the Galatians and that they're justified by faith in Christ, not by the keeping the Mosaic law and the works of the law. And the works of the law were punished with a curse. If you follow the works of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, you will be blessed. And if you don't, these bad things will happen to you. Why? Because if we are not connected to the fountain of life, 
In our mind, our heart, our soul, the great commandment for Israel was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself from the, the other text that's united then in this um, uh, summary. Uh, so it's a, a calling to live with love before a God who has been so generous in creating us and providing us with so much for our life. And then the temptation we always run into is to shortchange God. And we really shortchange ourselves in that process. And so uh, bad things befall us. It's not easy to make direct cause and consequences, but sometimes, yes, people, for example, who abuse drink in college substantially, continually, for years, they become alcoholics. And that requires, uh, that first of all, it takes a huge toll on health. It takes a huge toll on relationships. It can take a, a, a toll on all of life. But then with a renewal and a recovery, that person can become a gem of a person. The person that masters that addiction through help, medical help, through support of friends, especially in family, that person can be turned around by God's grace and be an extraordinary saint. We actually have an Irishman who's in that category, Matt Talbot. So the power of the human word is very strong. And we can bless people. And we also bless God. We speak well of God. We thank him. We praise him. And we can bless others. We can encourage them. Or we can be very harsh and mean. And the power of our words is immense. And our words can hurt others very deeply and permanently. And so permanently, with grace, obviously, that can also be undone with a lot of help. And so maybe the readings today should help us to not play around with evil. Never, not even to wish evil on any person. Not even to wish it. And then the next step would be not to call it down on them and thirdly, to do it against them. And so that's an extraordinary path. And I think one of the great blessings that came all over the world through the gift of Christ and the freedom from evil, deliver us from evil, was the flowering of the garden of the human heart. And in the measure we didn't do that in our Christian history, the weeds came back. And evil comes back into our lives. And to fill our lives with goodness. And this is one of the teachings of Jesus. That the house is all cleaned and ordered, but it's not filled with love. With the total love of our heart for God. And the total self-giving in family, in work, in community that people are called to do with all their talents. Once we become selfish, we cut off the lifeline of love. It's like cutting off the sap of a tree, and it dies. And our society suffers a lot because of turning from God and not having his blessing upon us because we have turned away from that blessing. So we can pray today for the overcoming of evil in our world, which is so apparent in many ways. There are beautiful things in our world, and many more beautiful things than evil things. And if somebody is now listening and feeling a great burden of evil, I recommend you, re you pray Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even if I go through dark valleys, I fear no evil. Because God is stronger. Blessings are much stronger than curses. Blessings are God's action in our lives. And that's more powerful than any evil that can befall us. Let us pray for a world that's suffering a lot and in need of a lot of blessing and also a lot of liberation from experiences of evil and from threats of evil and from concrete present suffering of evil in our time. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.